Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, today I got a negative space management tutorial for graffiti for you guys. And in here I'm going to teach you everything you got to know for negative space management. Not only that, but I'm going to be using other people's graffiti. This way you guys can actually see it used by graffiti artists you all know and love. Okay, so first things first, we got to go over what is negative space management. And it really is pretty self-explanatory. It's the management of negative space between two separate letters, but also the management of negative space between a single individual letter. Now for those of you guys who are familiar with typography and you know all of that stuff, you may know this as kerning. Graffiti uses a broader term than kerning just because kerning doesn't cover an individual letter's negative space. Nor does it cover negative space caused from extensions and exterior details. That's why graffiti uses a broader term, negative space management. Now the purpose behind negative space management is to make the name look cohesive. You see, we learned this in elementary school. If you position two letters closely together, they can make a word. If you take those two same exact letters and you push them farther apart, well now they have the negative space of a sentence and have the potential to make two different words. So what this tells us is if we pass a certain threshold of negative space, then our letters will look disjointed and as a result our word won't look cohesive. It won't look like an actual word. And that's not what you want. What that does is it ends up breaking flow when you detach the letters too much. Is it possible to do this? Yes, but that's getting a little more advanced, so we want to keep it simple for this tutorial. On the other side of the spectrum, when done properly, negative space can make a name look more cohesive. It can make it really flow and stand out and that's what I want to show you guys today. So here we got a piece from Rask. That'll be R-A-S-K. And you can see this piece as a whole looks pretty cohesive. It looks like one full word and there's a lot of reasons for that but today we're just going to focus on the negative space reasoning behind it. So as you'll see marked on the way left and the way right he's got two negative space within the letters that are very similar. They're quite large too. They're some of the bigger negative spaces within the actual letters themselves. And this is done in order to balance out both sides. But you'll notice within the actual piece itself, everything after the first letter and everything before the last letter, he has almost no negative space at all. He fills this in with 3D and letter positioning. And the only negative space is what's marked in blue right now. Now, not all negative space needs to be this tight. You can certainly allow for more negative space within the name. When you do this, it adds depth to the piece. But there is, once again, a threshold that you can hit where you pass it way too much and you gotta slow down just a little bit on that negative space. I wanna make that clear, your negative space does not have to be this tight. That's his personal preference, that's his style. We can also have a look at the top of his letters, where he has more negative space. When you're around the mean line of a piece, for those guys who don't know the mean line being like the center line of your letters, when you're around that area, your negative space tends to be closed up, similar to a closed counter. When you're around the baseline or the cap height, your negative space ends up reaching out and is more of an open counter, if you will. And that's what we're seeing here marked in red and yellow. He still has negative space, but it goes out to the top and it's still balanced. You'll notice the red is about the same size as the other red on the other side of the piece, and the A is about the same size, contains about the same amount of negative space to the S to the right of it. So imagine these general heights that we're considering to be like a cup. It's a cup full of negative space. And you you don't need to consider anything outside of your cup, if you will. That's how these open counters work when it comes to negative space. Now let's take a look at Esco's piece that he submitted using the hashtag ABCrit. He's got a lot of negative space between every single letter, and as a result, his letters don't flow. As a result, it looks like four different entities kind of inhabiting the same general area. And we marked the negative space distance between each and every single letter here, as you can see in red. So that's too much, that's too much negative space. I'll give you guys another example right here from Cool Time Fun, which once again, remember, we're only considering negative space management, none of the other fundamentals. Although those other fundamentals do play a role, we are focusing just on negative space management today. So we take a look at the purple, and that tells us how far his first letter is from his second letter. As far as the top of the letters are concerned, that's a lot of negative space in there. That's a whole lot of negative space. Now between his second letter and his last letter, you can see that that squiggly line indicates that there is a gap between those, and then we also indicate the distance between his bottoms of those letters. So this piece has a ton of negative space, and as a result, once again, it's making the name look disjointed, it's not flowing, and as a result, the name does not look cohesive. As I stated before, there are a ton of ways to fix negative space management. You can change the letter structures, make them thicker, make them thinner, make them just different entirely. You can 
position the letter differently. You can add drop shadow, you can add 3D, you can add extensions, you can add exterior details. There is no lack of ways to fix negative space management. And that's something I want to say for this piece right here that once again we have from Cool Time Fun, where he's got a ton of negative space. You can see the distance between his first letter and his last letter marked in red. And marked in yellow, you'll see again that we have those cups we were talking about. Except for the AS, the AS is a closed counter, so that's not really the cup we were talking about, but you get the point. There's still a lot of negative space in these areas. If he would have used thicker letter structures, different letter structures even in some areas, and position the letters closer together, he would have been fine. I do want to say, side note, keep it simple. A lot of people try to add a lot of style. They try to do wild things and really try to get funky when you still have to learn these fundamentals that I'm teaching you guys about today. Now, when we look at someone like Scene, this guy's textbook. This guy is absolutely textbook, which is why I love him and why I want to use him for this tutorial. Because when we look at his piece, we can see that his letters are packed. His letters are real tight, close together, right? So how did he get this to work? How is it that on one side of the spectrum, if your letters are too far apart, then your name looks disjointed and doesn't flow. But on the other side of the spectrum, if your letters are too close together, then you end up breaking letter structure. How is it that Scene got this to work. In these areas right here, all of the areas marked in red, you can still see a narrow part of the letter. So if we take, for example, the very first picture, the top E, you'll notice that the S doesn't cover the bottom part of the E meeting up with the side of the E. It doesn't cover it. You'll notice on the way right of that with the N, it does the same thing. You'll notice the left side of the N doesn't cover the right side of the N. You can still see a slight sliver of the letter pass by, and that allows for letter structure to not get diminished. I'll show you an example of what happens when you don't do that. Let's take a look at these three areas right here. You'll notice I got rid of those little slivers of the letter, and as a result, the letter structure gets diminished. Now, you guys are probably still saying, you guys are like, oh, but I still know that's an E. Well, obviously, you know that scene, you know his work, you know what his name is, you know what it's supposed to be. Not only that, it's really simple letter structure, so it's easy to make out. When you start doing more advanced wild styles, when you start to put more style into your letters, and you cut off letters the way we're showing in the red markings here, you diminish your letter structure. Even in simple pieces, you still diminish letter structure, and you do not want that. Which is why the graffiti legend, all-knowing scene, did not diminish letter structure, and he included that little sliver. That's negative space management and letter name positioning. That's what that is. You'll see he did the same exact thing here. And once again, because scene doesn't have any negative space between the letters, you can still see that he still did that. He still did not cover the letter entirely. He left that little sliver so you can see every horizontal part of the E meet the vertical part of the E. And that's essentially negative space management, guys. In a nutshell, you may want some negative space within your letters, but if you had way too much, then your name is going to look disjointed and it's going to be difficult or impossible for your letters to flow. And sometimes you may want absolutely no negative space within your letters. But if you do this, you may destroy letter structure. So be sure to keep a healthy amount of negative space. Be sure to give your letters some room to breathe. The example I always like to give is you want your letters to be something sort of like this. You want the negative space to be about this much with a letter, this being one letter, this being another, my fingers being the overlap, and the spaces between them being the negative space. You really don't want something like this, and you really don't want something like that. You typically want about this. And once again, once you get more advanced, you can always do whatever you want, as we see Scene has done. But for now, when you're just learning, keep it simple, do basic stuff, learn how to use it, and then move on from there. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comments down below. I will be sure to try to answer as many of your questions as possible. If you guys enjoyed this video or helped you out, be sure to like it. It lets me know you enjoy the content. And share it with someone you think it'll help out. For those of you guys who are new here, I do weekly art videos. And it ranges from everything, from like, you know, silly speed paintings, cartoons, real speed paintings, graffiti. We, we got pretty much everything here. So if you don't want to miss out on that, feel free to subscribe. And don't forget, check out the description. Pick your favorite social media and give me a follow over there. I'll see you guys next time, but until then, peace.